Hello, this is Real World Audio, and we are continuing our magical mystery tour, the exploration of uh, three different countries, <laughs> at least preamplifiers made in three different countries in China, Korea, and Japan. So this is the second episode, and we are going to look at Korea. This is an Ionic uh, preamplifier uh, made designed and made in Korea and uh, this is the L10,000 unit and it's called OTL OCL because it is a tube circuit and there's no uh, output transformer and there's no which is not a surprise because uh, out of 1000 uh, preamplifiers 990 or more are OTL so that's in itself doesn't say anything but it's also OCL it doesn't have an output capacitor either so a normal uh, amplifier that doesn't have an output capacitor has an output transformer if it doesn't have an output transformer it has an output ca capacitor so it means that the output of the unit the signal that comes out it either goes through a transformer or a capacitor. Now, when you are thinking about these terms, OTL and OCL, then uh, there are people who will tell you, who use a capacitor. And these people will tell you that using a capacitor in the output is much better because transformers have limitations. They have bandwidth limitations. They are big, heavy, and expensive. Uh, and uh, so that's the reason for using a capacitor on the output. And, and those folks who are selling you preamplifiers with an output transformer instead of an output capacitor, they are telling you that I'm doing this uh, because and using a transformer instead of a capacitor allows us uh, to have a, a much better impedance matching than a capacitor. So when you put a capacitor there, basically the only job of a capacitor is to protect your amplifier from the deadly DC voltage that's also part of the output of a vacuum tube preamplifier. However, uh, the, the transformer, the output transformer does the same thing. It also protects your amplifier from the deadly DC in the preamplifier, but it can do more than that. It also acts as a gearbox, so it's switching down. Uh, the output of the amplifier and can uh, provide and will provide tremendous uh, current boost and impedance boost for the preamplifier. And what that does is that because of that current boost, you don't need an additional stage for your preamplifier to keep the impedance low, so you make the signal path one link shorter and that's why you can have uh, a much more direct path preamplifier with an output transformer and have a much more pure sound and when you use a, a capacitor output then you require an added stage to give you lowered output impedance and that requires uh, uh, a lot of compromises to be made that will end up making the sound more mechanical compared to what we get from uh, transformer output or transformer coupled preamplifiers. Here, this is neither of them. And I was talking about these two things because you need to know that in understanding in order to understand what this is. So here we don't have either of them. So basically what's happening is that there would be 
DC in the output of this unit and they are using uh, a special configuration of the tubes so this is one channel other ch like ref right channel left channel side of the preamplifier and they are using it says two SEPP 300 B's output what on earth does that mean it means that uses one two tubes and it's 300 B's which are typically used as power tubes power output tubes and and this preamplifier is using a power tube and not just one two power tubes per channel as an output tube for the uh, for the preamplifier and it uses two because uh, they are being balanced uh, with each other and uh, and that balancing allows uh, to have no DC bias in the output and they use uh, another tube which is they list it where do they list it oh it should have a description here which are the other tubes because you saw there were ad additional tubes in the lineup I think we will see it shortly 6A and 8 and they are using the pentode section of the 6A and 8 to regulate I believe they don't say what what it's doing exactly and how it's working but I suspect that what it does is that it uh, makes sure and what the manual says as positive and negative feedback mechanisms so it makes sure that in the uh, there is no voltage differential between the cathodes of the 300 B's so there is no DC voltage arriving to your amplifier and the stable operation of this unit depends on the stability of that 6A and A tube that it doesn't go bad doesn't have problems and uh, because that's your warranty that's your safeguard that uh, there's no DC on the output because uh, and and you would say that why are they using all these tricks in this unit and they are using all those tricks to make sure that you don't need a transformer or a capacitor in the output because when you have either a capacitor or a transformer there they are adding their own sonic signatures to the sound so it means that you are getting uh, that much uh, further away from a uh, transparent uh, sound that there's either a transformer changing the sound or there's a capacitor changing the sound here you don't have any and the price to pay for that is two things one of them is the possibility that when something goes wrong in this unit then there will be DC present in the output and that will kill both your power amplifier and your loudspeaker um, I suspect though that they have probably engineered in safeguards that uh, in, in case uh, there's a, a failure with the uh, balancing of the output tubes that probably I suspect that the output will be cut or muted and no damage done to the unit but this is just me going off here I don't know uh, if there is a protection there or not if there is a protection like that that's going to decrease the sound quality so so sound quality wise that's not a good thing but uh, system safety wise it's a good thing so I don't know what's happening there but both possibilities both potentials have plus and minus and the other minus of uh, not using a, a, a transformer not using a capacitor is you have to use a much more complicated circuit so basically the circuit itself the addition of extra vacuum tubes it's going to make its own sonic signature addition to the sound so instead of a capacitor or a transformer adding its uh, personality to the sound you will have the additional vacuum tubes 
and the complex circuitry adding its signature to the sound. So we could make and run through theological discussions and debates on, on which is the correct path to audio salvation, to each audio heaven. Um, what uh, my experience tells you guys is that each choice, each uh, um, execution has its own uh, peculiarities and makes it more qualified to uh, different uh, systems and you have to try it out and listen to it, it they will all sound different and it's really up to you to find the one that will talk to you. What we are seeing here is a very high level implementation of uh, a preamplifier and uh, and what I have not told yet because I just so far I told you about the OTL OCA nature of this unit what that brings to the table how it's different from other units but what I haven't told that the company's name comes because so it's called Alnick and because they use all nickel core transformers so so the transformers use nickel laminations and nickel is that uh, material that has been used for transformers so the nickel, nickel laminations they allow the passing of very low level signals uh, so it's they they allow the transformation of very low levels although they do not allow very high levels of saturation so they cannot transmit giant amounts of power they are less amounts than uh, many other lamination materials but they can go at the low end of the spectrum much better here we are talking about i think what's there we have the filament transformer and two power transformers and uh, oops the, that's that's skype let me just get rid out of that for a second uh, and so here we only have the power supply but it's made of the highest grade transformers and uh, that's my mom and talking about my nephews we, i will get to that <laughs> in a minute uh, but let me first finish this video. So what we have is very high quality uh, transformers and that's the that's a very big change from the uh, holo audio serene deck where we had uh, basically a low grade transformers here. We have a very high grade transformers uh, but this unit costs 10 times as much as this unit does actually not 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 this is not how it looks like uh, this is the insides the outsides well do they have a picture yeah that's part of it but anyway you can find billion reviews online about this unit there's a lot of good guys who have reviewed it uh, and uh, yeah so uh, what else do we have here? I think uh, one more part of this uh, preamplifier that deserves mention is the 300B being used as an output tube. So why uh, why are they using vacuum tubes which are typical for power amplifiers in a preamplifier? Here we don't need like several watts of output. We just need a few milliwatts basically. We are in a completely different power range that's required from a preamplifier. So what benefit if there is any benefit for using power tubes? And that benefit is the linearity of these uh, power tubes. The 300Bs are direct heated triodes and they have very high linearity and uh, which means that uh, when you listen to very low level signals and very high level signals in the music so which means that the very whisper soft parts and the loud parts they will have the same 
distortion characteristics and the uh, balance between quiet sounds and, and, and the loud sounds will be uh, very very good and it will make it a much more lifelike, much more dynamic, much more colorless nature compared to using a tube that doesn't have good linearity um, like, like the 6DJ8, it doesn't have nearly as good linearity as a 300B so that's why they use it here. Another reason why they use it is because it runs at a very high current and uh, and that allow and when you have a very high current um, standby current running through a power tube then if you have a, a little current draw as your output then it will be a, a very light load for that vacuum tube it will be able to supply the current easily and in addition uh, one more reason to use 300B is that uh, it will have tremendous headroom. Uh, so basically you are going to stay at the linear region of the vacuum tube and you are never going to run out of steam as you would with the traditional uh, signal tubes. So these are the major benefits. Uh, are there any... Um, Downsides with using 300 bees here. Yes, the downside is that 300 bees are notoriously hard to drive. So, so you really need really powerful driver tubes to drive these big boys. And what are they do using? They're using 12 AU7s. Uh, where, where we are? Do, 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 do. Somewhere it lists vacuum tubes. No, I cannot find it. Do you guys see it? Oh, here they are. By the way, I'm getting new glasses, so I will be much able to see much more <laughs> in future videos than what I see now. So basically, they are using the same vacuum tubes that they use in their lower model that uses the 6B4A as an output tube. And, and that, one's can, that one can be driven very easily by a 12AU7. Uh, for the 300B, hmm, it, it's an okay driver tube, but I, I would use something beefier than that. However, probably they could do as well, but that would mean an additional increase in the price of the unit. And, and somehow, somewhere, they just had to say, stop, this is very, we are going to cut it, we are releasing at this price. Um, probably I'm sure they are thinking about uh, how to improve on it and I think the next version that's coming out that will be the big brother of this unit I, I'm not a betting person but I would bet that they will be changing the 12 AU7 driver for the future uh, higher grade version of this unit so I think this was my take on the uh, top model of the Alnik uh, preamplifier. I hope you guys uh, and, and ladies, girls uh, liked what I shared about and gave more on, on the insights, on the inner workings of, uh, of this unit, what it does, how they do, how does it compare to other preamplifier designs. And the next one, where we are going to continue for the next episode, will be we are going to Japan and we are going to have a look at a Sakuma amp preamplifier. And, uh, and that's not going to be uh, something totally random. And uh, for those of you who already know Sakuma-san, his name was Susumu Sakuma, you already uh, know that I am going there because this tube uses 300B as an, at the output stage and it was Susumu Sakuma who started using this vacuum tube, who started using power tubes in preamplifiers. So next time we are going to see what the uh, predecessor 
to Alnix uh, idea to use power tubes in the output stage what the previous generation uh, thought of it, how it was implemented, how a Sakuma preamplifier looks like. So thank you for watching, have an amazing day, bye bye.